Pixel Chooser is a unique feature in the continuum suite of visual effects filters. In this short video, we're going to master the Pixel Chooser to show you how you can create complex masked effects on a single clip with a single filter. Okay, we're going to be working in Premiere Pro for this, but these same techniques work wherever you're using your continuum filters. The idea behind the pixel chooser is to be able to limit where an effect is being applied without having to do any sort of complex layering. Everything is contained within the effect itself. And pixel choose can be found in pretty much every single effect. And I'm just gonna type in BCC into my effects. And we can see I have the full range of continuum effects here. You'll notice that some of the effects have the prefix BCC plus, and some have BCC. And there's a small difference in the Pixel Chooser interface between BCC Plus and BCC. And we're gonna be focusing on the BCC Plus Pixel Chooser, but the concepts are gonna be the same between both of them. And with that being said, let's find our first effect. So let's type in BCC Plus Prism and bring that onto our footage. And at smaller values, we can use Prism to give us this nice chromatic aberration effect but I'm gonna make this a lot bigger. So I'm gonna change my offset start position and just bring that over to the side in one direction. And I'll bring that back on the offset end as well and maybe get it looking around about there. So we've got a huge amount of separation happening. Now also in Prism, we have apply mode so we can apply these in a different sort of way. So we'd lighten, darken, you've got your screens and your multiplies. I really want to, to make this rather extreme. So I'm gonna go somewhere into a, a hard light maybe. And looking at it now, the colors are probably a little bit too pronounced. So I can come back with my prism width and just reduce that a little bit there. Okay, so if I play that back, it's definitely a very pronounced effect, but obviously now we can't see the, the subject at all. So it kind of looks like it's ruined the image a little bit but this is where Pixel Chooser comes in. So let's open up the Pixel Chooser, scroll down a little bit, and in the drop down, I'm just gonna turn this on. And now we have three other options available to us. We have Mask, Gradient, and Matte. And these are gonna be the different ways of limiting out our effect. I'm gonna start with Mask. And under the Shape drop down, I can choose what sort of shape I want to use, including primitives here, and a mocha spline. We'll get into that a bit later. So I'm gonna just start with a simple ellipse. And now we get an ellipse over our viewer and only the stuff within that ellipse is going to be affected by our prism. It's sort of the opposite of what we want. So I'm gonna click on invert mask. And it's at this point where I can feather things up. So we get a nice soft transition. I can also change things like rotation. Let's take that to 90 degrees, there we go and even change the mask center and the mask scaling. Now, sometimes you want to be able to do this interactively. And if we have the effect selected, we'll have some on-screen controls that allow us to do just that. So if I move my mask center just a little bit, you can see this is the widget that is going to control my mask center. So if I move that around, we can interactively change where that goes and I'll just position this so that's just over her head. So Pixel Chooser is creating a mask on our effect. And if I want to see that mask, I can come up to my view map mask up here and we can see the black and white outline of what it's doing. So white meaning the effect is applied 100%, black meaning it's applied zero, and gray means it's being applied more or less depending on how bright that gray is. And once we've got the Pixel Chooser shape in place, we can make any other changes we need to, to our clip. So I can animate this up. I'll come in, I'll take my global transformation down to zero, add a keyframe on that, come close to the end somewhere. And so now we've got this big effect, but we've preserved the important part, which is the person in the, uh, in the middle there. Let's come to our second clip here. And on this clip, I want to enhance the sky a little bit. You can see the sky is looking rather weak and, and blown out. I just wanna add a little bit more color to it. I'm gonna head over to my grads and tints category, and I'm gonna use a simple continuum color gradient. 
And if we look over at the effect controls again, I can just simply change up my color here um, just by using the color picker. Let's just change the hue to a cyan that fits you know, quite well in the, uh, in the background there. Now with color gradient, like a lot of the other effects, we do have on-screen widgets, so I can come in and just adjust the limits of the gradient there. But of course, we're also hitting our main subject as well, which doesn't look great. So this is obviously a job for Pixel Chooser. So let's come down to Pixel Chooser, turn this on, and I'm gonna start this time with a mat. And mat gives us the ability to either use our Luma channel or any of the individual color channels or alpha channel to create up our black and white mat. We can also pull a key, but we'll have a look at that later. With this clip, I'm just gonna use a Luma key. So pulling out something based on the luminance of the clip. And if I just cycle between these two, none and Luma, you can already see that the bright skies are being affected and that it's starting to pull out some of that color from the darker areas of the face. But let's control that a little bit more. So let's go back up to view mask and mat, turn that on, and we can see that being pulled out there. And with Luma, it's fairly straightforward what we're trying to do. So I'm just going to try and create a high contrast mat here. So pulling up the black levels just to create a, a darker mat there. And with the white levels, just pulling those back as well, just to get more of the sky being affected. Now, when creating this sort of high contrast mat, I'm going to try to be a bit aware of what's happening in the face, the rest of the face here, because if we can avoid it, I don't want too much going over the top of the hair. With this particular clip, I'm not sure that's going to be avoidable. Okay, so if I turn this off now, I've now made a much sharper contrast between the background and the foreground. Let's give that a quick playback. So this isn't sitting in quite as well as it did previously. And that's simply because we can see the areas where it's, it's kind of falling out a little bit. What I'm going to do is combine mats and masks together. And this really speaks to the power of Pixel Chooser to create really nice limited areas. So I'm going to close up the mat, open up my mask again, and I'm going to create another, let's, let's use ellipse one more time. And because we want to take this out from the face, I'm going to invert my mask one more time as well. There we go. And we'll rotate this and position this in place. And to hide some of our sins, I'm just going to come and use mask feather just to feather that out a little bit. I can also animate these up as well. So let's come to our mask center, animate that up, come over here where it's slipping and just move that over and add one more keyframe here as well. Do I need this to be perfect? Probably not, but we just want to make sure that we, we're not giving the game away right at the very start. Let's play that back. There we go. And that's not perfect, but I could spend a bit more time making it better, but that's, I think that's, that's gonna be good enough for us for now. So that's mask and mat. So masks are created using shapes and mats are created using some element of the original clip, whether it's the, the luminance values or some other color values that are found in the clip. That's, that's where we're pulling the mats from. And we also have gradient as well which we can look at really quickly. And with gradient type, we have three. We have a circular gradient, a linear gradient, or a strip gradient. And I'm gonna turn on view map mask on this so we can see this a bit easier. Um, I'm gonna use a simple linear gradient here. And you may ask, why am I using a gradient at all? As I already have a gradient created by the, the color gradient itself. Well, with this sort of effect, I actually quite like what the, the gradient does here in creating a more sort of natural fall off. So what we're doing is we're getting the original gradient going down and then we're sort of building on top of that with our pixel chooser. And there's our final pixel chooser result. So before, after, before and after. And let's come over to our final clip here. And with this clip, what I want to do is change the color of our shirt. And this sort of task is really easy with Pixel Chooser. So I'm doing color correction. So let's come into our color and tone effects. And I'm going to use BCC plus grade. 
Now, whenever we're doing a sort of proof of concept of this, I like to work fast. So the initial effect that I create is going to be quite big and strong, and then we can tweak that afterwards. So I'm going to come into the hue slider, and I'm just going to slide this round until we find a, well, let's, let's make this shirt blue, shall we? Now, obviously we've also corrected the rest of the image. Uh, so it looks a little bit weird, sort of like a, uh, um, like an early nineties music video. Uh, fantastic. So we're going to come into our pixel chooser, open this up and let's turn this off for a second, because in this clip, I only really want to change what's happening in the red sweater. So let's turn that back on one more time, come down and we're going to open up mats here. I want to choose what colors I'm going to use. And that means I'm going to pull a key and so turn on key. You can already see that it's doing something. Uh, and that's because we already have two key colors set up by default. So I'm going to take my key color a, and I'm going to click on this and let's choose something in the sweater somewhere around about there. And that's going to key stuff out and we can see that's done a pretty decent job, but we're missing something in the shadows over here. So with my key color B going to click on that and choose something that's in the fold there. And we end up with something that looks a little bit like this. So now's the time to tweak this up. So we get this looking right. And my first port of call is going to be the softness values. So to see which of these hue saturation and luma softness is going to help me to fill in these details. Here's a little trick for you. First thing to do is to bring this all the way up to see if that actually helps out to, to fill in any of the problem areas. So my hue softness is up to hundred now, and we're still getting the, the problems of these little side areas here. So we know that that's not going to really help out us uh, too much. So I'm going to pull down hue and bring this up to the lowest value that I can get where we're still pulling the best key. And we actually end up at 25, which is where the default value was, which is kind of funny. Um, and I'm going to do the same with saturation, turn it all the way up to see if that helps. And you can see it does, it does help to fill in some of that there. And now I'm going to pull that down as much as I can just there. And finally do the same with the Luma, pull it all the way up, see if it's going to help and then pull it back a little bit there. So that's, that's looking all right. Um, I can still see that I'm missing a little bit on the shoulders, a little bit there. So let's see if we can fix that. So I'm just going to come back up and view my matte mask just a little bit here so we can see what's, what's happening. It's often easier to see what's happening at this point now using this view and to fill in this shoulder area. I can probably just pull the clip white down just to fill in that gap just a little bit. Now, because we're keying out on red, it's also filling in some of the skin tones as well. So I can probably clip the black just a little bit there. We go round about there and let's see how that's looking and play that back. That's not looking too bad. And it's funny for me to say that, because we've obviously got a huge amount of stuff happening still on the, uh, on the face, but I'm not worried about that because that's, that stuff is bad, but I'm mainly looking at what's going on on the sweater and that's, that's looking pretty good. I might be tempted just to blur this a couple of pixels just to kind of soften out any of the, the harsh edges. So we want to do what we did last time and create a, a shape that goes over the top to limit this down even more. But this particular shape looks a bit more complicated than a kind of standard uh, ellipse or rectangle. But have no fear, let's close up our uh, mat and open up our mask. This is where Mocha comes in. And I'm going to click on this big launch Mocha button. Now, if you're not familiar with Mocha, Mocha is a tool that allows us to do tracking and mask creation nice and simply. We have a full Mocha Essentials course uh, available, which I will uh, link in the descriptions if you want to learn more, but I'm going to use this in an amazingly straightforward way, just three steps. So the first thing to do is to find our frame where we want to start our tracking. So probably around about here, somewhere that has a nice lot of detail, front facing, very good. And I'm going to draw my shape in and I'm going to come up to the toolbar. I'm going to choose an X spline and I'm going to just create a rough shape around my sweater. If I hold down the X key, I can sort of pan around the clip a little bit here so I can see what's going on at the bottom. And I'm going to right click just to close up that shape. So now I've created the mask shape that I want to use. 
let's track this so I don't have to do a lot of hand animation. So I'm going to come over to the left hand side, my track motion options. I'm going to leave this all at default and I'm just going to hit this big track forward button and let that track through. Excellent. And then let's come back to my original frame here, the green. You see that half of this on the timeline is now tracked because it's showing in blue and the other half is not tracked because it's showing in red. So let's track backwards using the big track backwards button. So we play that through. We can see we've got a pretty decent mask shape now. There are a few bits where the mask is slipping and that's because I was very tight with the shape I was creating. And as the girl leans forward, we're seeing more bits of the sweater we weren't seeing previously. So I'm just come in and, and change this up a little bit and it will automatically add a keyframe for me. As we move through, you'll notice that all of those keyframes that I've created are built on top of the original tracking data. So we only have to add in a couple of keyframes and everything's looking good. Once I'm happy with that, I can save my project. We'll save it using this button and then exit out. And that will automatically apply my mocha spline to my mask shape. Have a little look at that. There we go. So that's now limiting that area out. And if I don't want to be pixel perfect, a lot of the time I can just get away with adding a quick little bit of, uh, of feathering on my mask just to take away that harsh edge. Then if we play that back, that's looking pretty good. If I'm being very picky, obviously I can go in and sharpen that up a little bit. And this has been our quick look at what we can start to do with Pixel Chooser, how we can use it to limit effects to certain areas, either using simple shapes or a combination of mats, shapes and gradients, or even pulling our own chroma keys and using Mocha to create a final effect. And because Pixel Chooser is found in most of the continuum effects, we don't have to do any sort of layering in our editing system to create complex effects with a single filter. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I hope to see you again soon. If you've enjoyed this look at the Pixel Chooser, then be sure to leave us a comment below. Likewise, if there's any other continuum feature that you'd like to see us dive deeper into, then let us know below as well. To download a free trial of Continuum or any of the Boris Effects filters, then please head on over to borisfx.com.